Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to England and we're going to have a look at another beer from a brewery you've seen me review a good number of things from, but it does feel like quite a while actually since I filmed a, a video for this brewery. So for this one then, we are going to head down to Huddersfield in Yorkshire, which is of course home to Magic Rock Brewing. And this time, we're going to have a look at the Cannonball, which is an IPA coming in at 7.4% ABV. Now, now, when I was in Durham doing my teacher training, I actually managed to get a hold of the other beers in the Cannonball series from Magic Rock, but I never managed to do the original. And I saw this one in my local Tesco's the other day and I thought, you know, I really need to have a look at this beer because it's supposed to be um, really quite nice actually. So I thought, pick it up. It was only, this one only cost like one pound something if I remember rightly. So hopefully it turns out to be a really nice beer and definitely cool to revisit Magic Rock after a little while. You will see a few collaboration beers involving this them coming up actually so keep an eye out for those and um, but I did the the um, cannonball run when I was in Durham and that was the human cannonball which was um, a west coast double IPA there was the unhuman cannonball which was a west coast triple IPA and they also had the neo human cannonball which was the first time that was released in 2018 and that was a kind of big double hazy New England IPA if I remember correctly but really curious to see how the original one turns out and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer we'll need to see how we get on with it so anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Magic Rock Brewing before. No doubt there will be some more at some point in the near future. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county prefetch or whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the english beers that i've reviewed for you that's being added to whenever i get the opportunity and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about magic rock brewing then on to my brewery notes so as i've mentioned to you already magic rock brewing are based in Huddersfield in Yorkshire in England and they were established back in 2011 by the brothers Richard and Johnny Burhouse although Johnny later left the company quite early on and they were soon joined by head brewer Stuart Ross. So the beer brewing began in mid 2011 and the beers proved so popular that the brewery won the accolade of best new brewery of 2012 from Rate Beer and when you consider how many American breweries and things like that are considered by Rate Beer um, for a little brewery at that time from uh, Huddersfield in Yorkshire to be chosen was pretty damn impressive but this brewery was largely inspired by the craft beer scene over in America many of their beers are of course American influenced and they've been expanding their staff and capacity at the brewery um, because of the high demand in the years since so since 2015, this brewery have been based in the Willow Business Park in Berkby and they now employ over 30 people on this site. The new site has a brewing capacity of around 15,000 hectolitres of beer per year and they're continually expanding their fermentation capacity. Um, last year, in March of 2019, though Magic Rock was bought by Australian group Lion Beverages, who also own a Four Pure down in London, as well as Little Creatures in Australia and the Panhead Brewery in New Zealand as well. And this means that some of the Magic Rock beers are actually brewed in Australia and New Zealand these days and distributed around those countries as well. But Lion also own uh, Castlemaine Forex, quite a well-known beer from Brisbane, and also James Bogue, which I believe is still brewed in Tasmania. It's known as the Tasmanian Lager. Um, but, uh, you know, quite a big company. But from what I gather, people have told me that the Magic Rock beers still seem to be maintaining the same sort of uh, standards and things. I've not seen so much in the way of um, special beers and things being released from them as much as there used to be um, but the people to talk to that uh, talk about that to of course would be Rob at Hopsin who is very close to Huddersfield actually so um, yeah make sure you check out his channel I'll try and remember to put a link to it in the description below but Magic Rock a really well respected English brewery and uh, you know they always did some very very interesting beers in my experience I've not done a review from these guys though in like I think it's about two years or something, so definitely cool to return to them after uh, quite a bit of time. So yeah, check out this brewery if you get the chance. Really worth having a taste of some of their beers. I always like the the stout. I forget what the uh, the name of it is now, but the salty kiss 
um, that might be the name of the stout. They had a porter as well, a coffee porter, which was very, very nice. But um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Magic Rock Brewing for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And of course, you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see um, all the information on the different beers that they've done. So um, yeah, as of February 2020, they've produced over 100 uh, different types of beer so far, according to Untapped. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this one then. So as you can see, this can has that lovely distinctive artwork that you'll find from uh, from Magic Rock. They used to have little monster things on their uh, on their cans actually, but I have to say well, that's one of the things I really love about Magic Rock is just this lovely artwork there. And there you can see on the back of the can there, if the light will catch it, there you go, the Magic Rock Brewing Company symbol there. But really nice. As I said, this one is an IPA coming in at uh, 7.4% ABV, I thought it was 7.2, but um, yeah, should be really nice. So without further ado then, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting, a little 330 milliliter can. And as I was saying, this beer is available in Tesco stores throughout Scotland and obviously it'll be available down in England as well since it is an English beer. But let's see how we go with this one then. Oh, this will be quite good, look at that. So, yeah, as you can see with this one, it's poured a lovely, kind of bright, hazy orange, that I have to say. There's a solid two-thirds finger of a frothy, cream-coloured head, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of the head there, but overall, it looks pretty nice. I didn't expect this one to be hazy, I have to admit. I thought this one would be a little bit more kind of West Coasty looking and clear, if you like, but it's definitely not the haziest of um, IPAs that I've come across before actually. I'll need to watch the English guys reviews and see if the ones that they've reviewed a while back actually appeared like this. But it looks like a really nice beer. Um, kind of what you would expect from an IPA these days. So nothing overly surprising about that. A lovely kind of bright um, orangey amber colour this one. It's, it's at the edge of the yellow orange kind of thing there. But um, yeah, let's have a look at the aroma of this one then and see how we get on. Oh yeah. That smells pretty damn nice, I have to say. Um, straight away with this beer. Um, one of the things I always remember saying about Magic Rock is that the I'm pretty sure they were using acidulated malt in all their beers, and it really gives you a little bit of bite to the um, the the malt base, and it's almost it almost just gives you a little bit of a kind of sour quality in the middle of the palate too, which is quite interesting. But you can definitely smell some nice big white ready wheat in there as well. I always remember the Magic Rock IPAs being a little bit more bitey and things compared to uh, to some of the other ones. But this one, um, this one really has that about it. Some of the acidulated malts coming out in the nose, some lovely wheaty notes. I think a little bit of an OT creaminess in there as well, but that's quite minimal compared to the bitiness of the wheat and what I think is acidulated malt. Um, that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, it really smells quite high and bitter, this beer, actually. I think there's going to be quite a bit of bitterness to this one, just going by the aroma. Um, there's some nice big piney resins coming out of this. Little touch of earthiness as well. Um, you do get some floral notes in there as well, but they're kind of muffled a bit by the pine resins. Not so much in the way of grassiness in this one for me. It, it really is the big floral and piney notes that are drowning that out. And in terms of fruitiness... Um, to me, this comes across as quite pungent and grapefruity. There's some tropical notes under there, but they're a bit difficult to pick out. They might come out a little bit more in the flavour, but to me, this beer comes across as big and grapefruity, big pine resins, maybe a little bit of like mangoes and stuff like this too, but it really has... It smells like this is going to be a very kind of big, bitter beast of a beer, actually. Um, the cannonballs were, you know, they were a good kick in the balls, basically, when you had them. Those are big, um, beastly beers. And at 7.4%, this one is going to be like one of these kind of old school IPAs. I think the the um, ABVs of a lot of these IPAs now is dropping now into the 60s rather than being high at the 7% the as they used to be. Um, but yeah, this one I think will be a little bit special actually. I'm really curious to see how this one turns out. But to me, very old school, piney resinous, grapefruity and um, sort of wheaty bitey IPA this one. Take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this before you get stuck in. 
just trying to see if I can get a bit more out of the fruits. There's maybe a wee bit of an orangey note there as well as the grapefruit. You can get a few little bits of tropical fruit out of it too, but otherwise um, it's it's the pine raisins and stuff that really dominate the aroma here. So um, yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how it got. And this one is the original Cannonball, or just Cannonball as it's called, it's 7.4% pardon me, a little bit of gas, from Magic Rock Brewing in Huddersfield in Yorkshire down in England. Let's get stuck into this one. Slangia, skull. Oh yeah, it actually, it mellows out really nicely that one. It's, it has got the big notes that I was expecting it would have. But um, it's not, the, the fruitiness isn't quite as grapefruity as the aroma was having me to believe. Um, de that's definitely an interesting point about this beer. This is quite a, it strikes me as quite an old school IPA in terms of the flavour profile. There's so many different hops and malts out there these days. But I will say, it is still pretty damn solid I think. So, thumbs up to Magic Rock once again. Um, as I say, I do hope they keep up, they are, or they are keeping up. Their, uh, their original standards that they had. But yeah, that's a really solid, um, a really nice kind of solid IPA, definitely a big sort of... Um, it, I, I'm just surprised that this is a little bit more kind of hazy and things. I'm sure this used to be like a, a West Coast IPA. I could be wrong right enough um, on that one. But um, as it stands, it is pretty damn solid. So if you get the chance to try this, I recommend that you do a very well-respected English brewery, as I said. Um, so let's try and break the flavour of this one down a little bit then. So yeah, straight away with this one then. Middle of the palate, you can feel some of that nice white bready wheaty quality. That just blankets the middle of the tongue. On top of that, um, you can get a little touch of that acidulated malt out of this one, but you do get some sweetness in the middle of the palate here as well. Um, if you go to the very centre of your tongue, you can pick up a little bit of a kind of sweet caramelly note to it, and that'll be the booziness kind of covering up at the beer. And as you move further out from that, you get a little bit of a biscuity quality there, and the, the sort of acidulated malts, they come out a little bit more towards the front of the palate for me. Um, but it's not, it's not quite as prominent as I remember it being in some of the other um, Magic Rock beers that I had. But maybe, of course, it could just be palates changing and things like this because, you know, um, craft beer, it's been about two years since I was able to review Magic Rock beers quite regularly. Um, so, you know, your palate does change quite considerably in that amount of time, so maybe these beers just come across to me differently from what they used to. Um, but I really like how this um, how this one goes together. The malt base of this is very, very nice. Um, so yeah, like I said, a kind of smooth, white bready, wheaty base, some sweeter caramel in the centre of the tongue, biscuity notes just kind of pushing out to the side. That I don't really get much oatiness out of this one, but I think, did it say on the can, I don't think there was oats um, in this one. No, just barley and wheat, that would make sense then. I thought it was picking up some oatiness in the aroma, but you do get a little bit of that kind of acidulated malt towards the, the front of the palate, and it gives you just a slightly almost um, soury note to it. It almost feels as if there's a little bit of wax on your tongue and everything just kind of flows over it. So it's, it's quite an interesting addition. That was always a trademark of a magic rock from what I remember. But if you go to the front corners of the palate as well and move in, you might detect just a few kind of woody undertones to this beer as well. But the malt base of this is really quite nice actually, and um, you can see how I think the acidulated malts might be a bit more prominent in the, the other ones in the Cannonball series because, you know, they're a hell of a lot more boozy than this. Um, but it's 7.4%. This is an IPA that does have a fair wee kick to it. You can see that at least. So, hoppy side of the beer then. Back corners of the palate, there is a little bit of earthiness there, but it's quite minimal. As you come further forward though, you can feel the beer pushing more into that kind of big floral, aromatic kind of quality. There is a little bit of a piney resinous quality to this one as you reach the front corners of the palate, but as you go round the front curve of the tongue, it's just that little bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy, I would say. And of course, then you've got the fruity side of things to look at as well. So 
So yeah. On the uh, the fruity side of things then, this one's got a really nice juiciness to it actually. I thought this was just going to be a big uh, grapefruity piney beast actually when I tried it before. Um, but if you go to the back of that oily bubble where the, the fruity esters from the hops come out, you get a little bit of a kind of grapefruity note out of it. It does have a little bit of that darker fruit. That spreads forward a little bit and then you start to get some of the more kind of lighter tropically notes. But the, the grapefruit, in fairness, the more I think I look at it and I sort of focus on that part of the palette, you do feel it getting just that little bit darker and more prominent, I would say. So yeah, when you take the beer in earlier on though, there are some more juicy fruity notes to it, maybe a little bit of orange or something like that, but there's also a wee bit of a, I think there's a wee touch of passion fruit to this one as well, and maybe, I think, I think it's mainly a little bit of passion fruit, a little bit of orange, maybe a wee bit of mango or something like that, but dark grapefruit, then the passion fruit, then a little bit of the orange and some lighter tropical notes on the front part of the tongue too. If I was guessing hops, I think there might be a little bit of Chinook in here. Either that or they'll be using Columbus um, as the bittering hop because it does have quite a big kind of um, sort of spicy resinous type note too on the edge of the palate. Um, probably maybe a little bit of Simcoe, maybe, but although it could be a little bit of Galaxy or something like that. The, the, the passion fruity notes are quite pungent in this and maybe a wee bit of, uh, of Amarillo because the orange comes across as a little bit uh, oily to be honest with you. But they might, you know, they could well have changed that to mosaic in fairness because the further you go into the aftertaste, it does just get a little bit lighter in that regard. But I like playing Guess the Hops with these beers, but I will say this is a pretty solid kind of old school um, IPA. It's it's nice to go back to this brew and it's interesting as well to try the little brother of some of these big beasts that I've had from, uh, from Magic Rock before. Some of the guys down in England, like J. Cole, I think he likes to do the cannonballs uh, every year and some of the other guys do them as well, so worth keeping an eye on them for those beers. So um, yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel then, yeah, mid-bodied beer this one, carbonation has a little degree of crispness to it but mainly it's quite smooth. The mouthfeel overall has an element of smoothness to it, you do get some nice kind of um, you do get a good bit of wetness out of this one actually and it has a little bit of a kind of clean mouthfeel to it as well which is quite interesting, I like that about it too. Um, but yeah, quite smooth, quite wet, not the most oily of IPAs that you're going to come across. In terms of hoppy bitterness, I think this one's got to be around 50 or maybe 60 IBUs, something like that. This one does have a good little bit of bitterness to it around the edge of the palate. As you go around the front curve of the palate though, you do get those lighter grassiness so that the... the, the, the um, the, the resinous, the big piney um, bitter notes are on the very edge of your tongue and the fruitiness as well. It's got a little bit of juiciness, a wee bit of oiliness, but mainly a kind of smooth, juicy fruitiness that comes out of this one. So it's got a few elements of the kind of New Englandy type thing to it, but there are elements of uh, the old West Coasty thing and it's a more high, uh, a more highly bitter beer this compared to others. But a really interesting beer this one and I'm glad that I was, uh, I was able to review it for you. So yeah, cool to visit Magic Rock once again after quite a wee while. So I hope you've enjoyed my take on this. It's cool to review the little brother of those big cannonball beers. So make sure you check out the Human, the Unhuman and the Neo-Human Cannonball if you get the chance. They seem to release those every year from Magic Rock Brewing and you can see, watch my English friends um, doing some reviews of those as well. Craig at Kent Beer Reviews, Dean at Dean's Beer Reviews, Harry at Blue Nose Beer Reviews, um, J. Cole at J. Cole Beer, Peter the Clueless Drinker and uh, Robert Hopsey. Yeah, there's, I'm sorry if I'm missing anyone, it's difficult to go through the list like that but a really interesting beer this one and a brewery that I re definitely recommend that you get uh, you, you check out if you get the chance. Dark Arts, uh, the Stout, that was the one I was thinking of earlier that's definitely worth checking out as well. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Magic Rock as well. Hopefully we can return to these guys at some point soon. Like I said, you'll be seeing a few collaboration brews, uh, beer reviews involving this brewery, but hopefully we can do some more dedicated Magic Rock beers at some point soon. This one was the Cannonball coming in at 7.4% from Magic Rock Brewery in Huddersfield, Yorkshire and England. Thank you again for watching, make sure you check out my social media, check out Magic Rock Brewing and I will catch you guys very soon. Slanja, Skull, cheers.